Google Workspace is one of the most popular business email services due to its extensive app ecosystem and powerful business Gmail application. However, many business owners get stuck or set up their business emails and domain incorrectly, which causes issues with email deliverability. So today, my focus is to walk you through the complete process of purchasing and connecting a domain with your new Google Workspace account and how you can properly set up your team's business emails. Now, just quickly, before we go ahead and launch into this Google Workspace tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel. Okay, so with that quick note out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this Google Workspace tutorial and set up your business emails. Okay, so in order to set up your team's business emails, your branded Gmail business emails, we need to complete two things. First, we need to set up a Google Workspace account, and we also need to purchase and connect a domain name. So let's first get started with a fresh Google Workspace account. Simply head over to your browser and type in googleworkspace.com, and that's gonna take you here, or feel free to click the link in the description below this video. Once you arrive here, what we can do is navigate down the page, and that's gonna take you to the Google Workspace pricing. Now, for most local and small businesses, the business starter is sufficient enough, and will only cost you $3.60 USD per month per user. So if you had a team of five and each of your team members needed a business email, then that's gonna cost your organization five times $3.60, which is 18 USD per month. And you can always upgrade to these more extensive plans as your business grows and scales. Now, not only do each of your users get access to a branded business Gmail, they also have access to all of these other apps and tools. And today we're just going to focus on setting up our business emails. However, what I'll do is add my other relevant Google Workspace tutorials in the description below this video that you can check out following this video after you set up your business emails. Okay, so let's navigate down to start free trial. Now, each of these plans also offer a 14 day free trial, meaning that if you decide you don't like Google Workspace and you want to use a different business email service, you can simply cancel your subscription within the first 14 days and you won't be charged. Okay, so with that covered, let's go ahead and set up our Google Workspace account. Come down and click start free trial. Navigate up to business name and add your business name. And for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to set up professional and branded business emails for an example business called Reno It, which is a renovation company based in New York. Come down and select the number of employees that you have, and then select the region that you operate in. Then come down and click on next. Here you want to add your first name, surname, and current email address. And because you're setting up this Google Workspace account for your organization, you will be the account admin. And you can change who the Google Workspace admin is later on down the track. Okay, so let's add these details. Then come down and click on next. Here you'll be asked if you have a business domain. This is essentially your website URL. If you've already purchased a domain for your business or you already have one set up, then simply navigate up to, yes, I have one that I can use. Then come down and add your domain name. Now, for those of you that currently do not have a professional domain for your business, you can simply pick, purchase and register a domain in just a few minutes and I'll show you how. And there are hundreds of domain registrars that you can purchase a domain from. If you want to learn more about choosing the right domain provider for you, what I'll do is add a video guide down below that will cover my top five domain registrars. Feel free to check out that video if you like. For many small business owners, I typically recommend Hostinger to set up your domain. Okay, so let's dive over to Hostinger by heading over to hostinger.com. Or you can click the link in the description below this video and that's gonna take you here. For those that already have a domain name, you can skip this chapter and meet us back inside Google Workspace. Inside Hostinger, simply navigate over to Domains and then come down and type in your business name. For example, renoitmanhattan.com. Now, if you run an online business or your audience is based mainly in the US, then you ideally want a .com domain. Most US consumers prefer dealing with a .com domain. Now, in terms of your domain, you want to add your business name. For example, my business name is renoit. And if you operate in a geographical location, for example, Manhattan, you can add the location keyword in your domain. This is going to help with SEO, search engine optimization. However, if you operate in many different regions or internationally, then you just want to add your business name. However, for most small and local businesses, you want to add your business name and then the location that you operate in and then add the TLD, this is called top level domain, 
that is relevant to your market, and there are many that you can choose from. Again, .com is the most trusted TLD. Then click on search. Make sure that your domain is available. If it's not, then you might need to add a variation of your domain name, and you can also see other alternatives down here. Okay, let's navigate back up and click on Add to Cart. Down here, you can choose your billing cycle. How long do you want to register this domain for? And you can see you get a discount on the first year. Then every year, it's going to cost you $15.99. So a domain name to register a domain name, you need to pay a small fee every year. Okay, so let's navigate over to three years and you can see the price over here for registering this domain for three years. So I don't need to worry about paying for this domain for the next three years. Then navigate down the page. If you already have an account login here or add your email and password down here, then select your payment option and add your details down here before submitting and purchasing that domain. So take your time to fill out these details. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and purchased a new domain. So I'm going to meet you inside my hosting it account. Okay, so once you've made a purchase, you'll be asked to add your registration details for your domain. And then you'll be taken inside your hosting it account. Simply navigate over to domains and here you can find your new domain. You can see that it's active. You may be asked to verify your email, so go ahead and do that first. Okay, so now that we have a professional business domain name, let's head back to the Google Workspace interface. Navigate up here and add the domain name that you just purchased or the domain that you already own and then click on next. And again, make sure that this is the correct domain, then click on next. And here we want to add our first business email. This is our username. Here, I'm just going to add my name and you can see this will be my first business email. Stuart at renoitnewyork.com. Ideally, you want to add your name here and I'll show you how to add email aliases later on. And an email alias could be sales at, booking at, admin at, and team at yourdomain.com. And for example, if I set up all those email aliases for this user, any email sent to that alias will arrive in this user's email inbox. Then come down and add a password. And these are the details that you will use to log into your Google Workspace account. Come down and click that you're not a robot and then agree and continue. Here, Google Workspace will recommend a plan for you. You can also click this drop down and change payment plan here. For now, we're just going to select try free for 14 days. And you can always change your plan later on. Then go ahead and add your details before agreeing and continuing and making that purchase. And once you've added your details and made that purchase, you'll be taken here. You'll be asked if you want to add the Gemini business add-on. This allows you to leverage AI inside your different Google apps like Gmail, Google Sheets, Slides, Google Documents, and more. If you want to learn more about leveraging AI inside Google Workspace, then what I'll do is add a Gemini tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will cover how you can use Gemini AI inside your Google Workspace account. So go ahead and check out that tutorial if you're interested. For now, let's navigate down and click on skip for now, and then I understand, and that's going to take you to your admin console. Come down and click on next. And what we first want to do is activate our business emails with Gmail for our domain that we just purchased. Click on activate. And as you can see, Google has identified that we're using Hostinger to host this domain. And you can do this with any domain provider. It doesn't have to be Hostinger. So if you've purchased your domain using a different hosting provider, what you want to do is locate these settings here. Let's come down and click on go to step two. And this might look daunting, but trust me, it's a very straightforward process. We first need to add our Google MX records, and we do that inside our domain host DNS records or settings. Let's head back to Hostinger, and then within Hostinger or your domain provider, locate your domain, and then locate DNS name servers. This might be called something slightly different inside your hosting account. Then what we want to do is navigate down to manage DNS records. Okay, so let's head back to Google Workspace, and from the type, we want to select MX and then in the name host alias, we want to add this at symbol and then use the values in the table below to add the Google MX record in the server mail server value answer destination field. So in your hosting provider, it will be called something like this. Simply click here to copy this information, then head back to Hostinger or your domain provider. Then come down to type. Here we want to select MX, then under name, we want to keep this at symbol and then mail server, paste in that information that we copied and then over on priority, simply add one and you can leave the TTL as it is 
and then click on add record. And as you can see, the DNS record has been created successfully. Let's head back to Google Workspace. Navigate down the page, and now we're up to G down here. So we've added this information. Now we want to get this verification code. Come down, click here, and that's gonna copy this code to your clipboard. And now we want to add another MX record just like we did above. Only this time, in this section here, remember depending on your domain provider, your value field will look something like this, or will be called something like this. And we also want to set the priority to 15. Okay, so let's head back to Hostinger and then come down to Manage DNS Records. Again, under Type, we're going to select MX, then keep the at symbol under Name, navigate over to Mail Server or the Value Destination and paste in the code that we copied, then navigate over to Priority and add 15. And again, keep the TTL the same and then select Add Record. And you can see DNS Record created successfully. Let's head back to Google Workspace and then come down to Activate Gmail. Give Google Workspace a moment to check your MX records. Hey guys, just quickly before we get back to this video, I just want to mention my Sheetify CRM, an all-in-one business toolkit and CRM built with Google Sheets and designed for Google users. You can simply manage leads, customers, tasks, engage in email marketing, manage your inventory, tickets, and more. The great part is I've made this Sheetify CRM a one-time payment, no subscriptions, unlimited access, and future updates. If you're interested in learning more, you can find the link to my Sheetify CRM down below in the description. Okay, so with that covered, let's go ahead and get back to this video. And just like that, after a few minutes, you should see this notification, well done, MX records are updated. And you can now start using Google Workspace. Now it's important to note that you can typically send and receive messages from to your new Google Workspace email address in less than six hours. Typically it can take up to 48 hours before you receive email at your new address. Let's come down and click on finish. And now let's add our team members business emails. Go ahead and click on create and we can add up to 10 users during the free 14-day Google Workspace trial. And with each of the business emails you create for your teams, you can create free aliases like info at, sales at. Okay, so let's come down and click on continue and then add another user and then add their details in here. And as you can see, I've added my new user's first name, surname, and email username. So this is their new business email, emma at renoit, newyork.com. Then down here, we can quickly add email aliases. For example, let's say Emma is our small business administrator as well as our customer support person. So I've added these two free email aliases. Now, when a potential customer sends an email to admin at renoitnewyork.com or support at renoitnewyork.com, then Emma will receive those emails inside her primary email inbox. Now, Emma can not only receive emails at these aliases, she can also send emails back using these email aliases. If you want to learn more about sending and receiving emails with email aliases, I will add a tutorial down below in the description that you can check out. Okay, let's come down and click on Save User, and then we can simply add another user if we like. For now, I'm going to click Continue. Now, let's navigate up to Apps and locate Admin. Click on Admin App. And as the admin, that's gonna take you to the admin console. This is where you can manage your Google Workspace account. For example, from within your dashboard, you can add, delete, and manage users here. You can also create alternative email addresses, email aliases for your other users. And you can also update users. Here you can manage your billing and more over on the left-hand side. You can manage app permissions and manage your account. Okay, let's navigate up to directory and then come down to users. Here we have our two users at the moment. You can see this user here. This is myself. I can reset password, rename the user, and then I have more options over here. I can email this user, add this user to groups, and more. Let's navigate over and click on this user, and that's gonna open up more details. Here we can add an image for this user. Simply click here and add a profile image. For example, let's say this is the image that I want to use. And now this user, myself, has a profile picture you can see the account storage use for your particular users and navigate down and manage different information like admin roles and privileges, the apps that this user has access to, and more information. Let's navigate back to home. Now again, like I mentioned, if you wanna learn more about using Gemini AI inside Google Workspace, 
You can find that tutorial down below in the description. Also, I recently created a video that shows you how to start and launch a business by just using Google Workspace. This is a great tutorial for small businesses because it shows you the power of Google Workspace and how you can leverage all the different apps to manage, run, and operate your business. Again, you can find that in the description. Also, if you want to increase your email deliverability, I will add relevant tutorials down below that will help you with this. Now, one thing that Google Workspace does not offer is a CRM, a customer relationship management software. Therefore, I created a CRM using Google Sheets. This is a dynamic and all-in-one CRM that's connected to all your favorite Google apps. This powerful CRM that I created allows you to engage in email marketing activities so that you can send bulk emails to your contacts. You can also manage tasks, inventory, your sales pipeline, and more, all within this Google Sheets CRM called the Sheetify CRM. I will add more details about the CRM down below in the description. However, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this beginner's tutorial, helping you set up business emails inside Google Workspace so that your entire organization now has business emails all set up and ready to go. If you want to dive deeper into adding new users, again, I will add the relevant tutorial down below in the description, which will share more on how you can create business emails and share the access with your teams so that they can start using their Google Workspace account and business emails. And there we have it guys, that is it for this brief Google Workspace tutorial showing you how to set up your business emails. Now if you have any questions about this Google Workspace tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.